mentors. Uh, mentors. Hmm. I don't know if I have, have had really too many mentors that I can think of off the top of my head. People who've inspired me, though, have been guitar players. Usually, I, I usually lean. We've talked about this before out there, but I usually lean towards guitar players who uh, who aren't usually athletic chopmeisters, but guys who play something that I can take away when they're done playing and remember. Guys who come up with hooky sounds and guys who are playing more from without banging on the mic from here rather than here. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I like Keith Richards. I'm mad for Keith Richards, you know. It's all about soul. And I just listened to the 40 Licks albums, which is just, you know, nothing but singles for about 30 years. And, you know, God, I mean, he doesn't have any chops to speak of, but he's inventive. And there's all these hooks and just hook after hook after hook. These intros are undeniable. Uh, I love the Beatles just because of the parts and the way they orchestrated the guitars. I like early Santana, you know, very soulful playing. It wasn't just all about blah, blah, blah. So those are the guys I like, people who are playing melodies and chords that other people don't play. Jeff Beck, unbelievable player, you know, just a guitar and a, an amp, no pick, no nothing, just goes into it and it's all in his fingers and it's in his heart. And, and those are the guys I really like, the guys who just, uh, you know, you hear them play for four seconds and you know who it is without being told. Well, I mean, from, you know, I always, I come from a generation where bands didn't try to sound like each other and look like each other, you know. In the 60s, everybody was trying to forge their own look, their own sound, their own everything. Nobody, I mean, it's sacrilege to try and go out there. I mean, sure, when you're a kid, you, you play covers. But once you find, you know, you want to develop your own voice and your own style, as opposed to, you know, now they're interchangeable junior bands that, it's fifth generation rock bands, they're all doing exactly the same thing, working with the same four chords. You know, when I was a kid, you, you, when you would write a song, you'd try to write a song not using chord changes that everybody else was using. So that's why I listen to a lot, of, a lot of Brazilian stuff. You'll hear chords there. You know, these guys walking around here don't know how to play any of those chords. So that's what I try and bring into whatever it is I'm working on. I try and, if I'm on a session, I'm trying to add something to it that's not already there. You know, if a song is this, you try and, you know, dynamically paint the picture even, give it more depth than what's already there, try and bring a sound or something that when somebody hears it, it's, you know, opening up to what's already there. Well, when I used to play with Bruce Hornsby, he's got a very large piano sound and it dominated the records. And, uh, and it was always a challenge to find a part that would work with that. and. And in all music, whenever, you know, I mean, that's where the word comping comes. The term comping comes from compliment somebody else. And a lot of people don't realize that. But whatever, if you're going to play, it's got to work with what else is going on. And as a sideman, you got to get that right away. You got you to bring something. You got to add something. But it has to be a part of a puzzle, not, not the whole picture. So that's, yeah, that's what you got to, you know, if you're a sideman or whatever, any musician, I think, you know, if you're playing with another musician, it's like a conversation. Music is the language. If we're speaking, you know, you don't talk at the same time, you don't interrupt, and you don't talk five times louder than the other guy, and, and hopefully it's back and forth, and that's what I try and do musically, so.